Good morning. Modern communication tools for modern businesses. That's the uh, topic that I have chosen for the day. Uh, before we do that, I would like to take you through a past and the future, or rather past and the present comparison. This used to be the famous Dilbertian workplace, right? Cubicles after cubicles, and there is complete monotony. I have chosen black and white particularly, specifically there. But this is the workplace of today. It's the new seat of innovation. Um, it's not one corner room somewhere in an office. This is the office. If you get across the road and visit WeWork, for example, this is the place where hierarchy breaks down. Conscious efforts to break down hierarchy happens. And this is the new seat of innovation. A meeting is happening there, actually. Probably a big deal is being broached. But you don't really see it because these things aren't planned. These things are like the, the golf meetings of the uh, past where it actually happens organically. It just incidentally comes up and then something small becomes something much larger. They're not planned, they are opportune. And most of the time, it used to be, at least when I started work, it used to be that we were told what to do. We were told to ensure that it gets done. And we were actually told not to do much more than that. But that's not the game of the day today. It's collaborative. And most of the time, we want our managers to get out of the way. Right? We want them to help us only in the removal of obstacles. Resolve the problems I'm stuck with. Resolve the political issues I am struggling with. But just get out of the way and let me work your magic and then demonstrate and deliver it to you. It's not directive, it's collaborative. Talking about learning, I come from Zoho University. I have learned that almost all the meaningful learning that you really need for your job, you learn on the job. It's not as if you can study, 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 and then finish studying, and then use whatever you learned and get it delivered at work. You actually learn on the job. And it is experiential. It's not formal. You actually learn on the job. And finally, the office has vanished from being a place where you go all dressed up for work from 9 to 5, and then come back, put your shoes off, and uh, put your legs up. From there, it has moved to an environment where your office is actually everywhere. You work from home. You have fun at office. You have vacations. Have you heard of vacations, where you go on a vacation and have do work too? So all this, there is a method behind this madness, and there is a, a conscious effort to inject innovation at every step of the game. This used to be the traditional hierarchy. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to ask you to tell me what company do you think is actually shown here? Which company's hierarchy is actually represented here? Your, your call. There is no right answer. The closest answer is Apple, at least during Steve Jobs' times. So he was the man who called the shots at everything. And Tim Cook is not too very different from Steve Jobs' Apple. All right. Can you tell me about this company? Which company do you think is being shown here? IBM, OK. Google. So there is Sundar Pichai in the middle. There is Larry and Sergey, who have spun away and started Alphabet. And that's Google, a lot of crisscrossing happening there. Information sharing, probably your information. Which company is this? Connecting people. It used to be Nokia, connecting people, but it's Facebook today. Where there's really, you can't really find out where Mark is, right? But the whole idea of connecting people represented as a flat, crisscrossed hierarchy. Okay? How about this one? Neat little hierarchies divided into silos. But they are at war with each other. Right? I got this as a WhatsApp forward, so don't blame me. But it seems uh, the company associated with this name, at least 
pre Satya Nadella is Microsoft. So there was this time when, yeah, when teams were fighting against each other and uh, probably um, it being detrimental to the progress of the company itself. So there is this um, thing, this concept, this structure that's actually gaining steam where there is no central top-down hierarchy, but there is a model where there is a team and then there is another team and then there are other teams. They interact, but they don't share too much. But intra-team, there's a much tighter coordination and integration happening. In fact, this guy has even written a book about it. It's called The Team of Teams. He's a general from the American US Army. And he says he learned the lessons that he's actually conveying in this book when he was in Iraq. He had this beautiful regimented structure in his unit, but often it seems that before he even started an initiative for attack or for subversion or for uh, whatever, he's, he realized that information had already leaked and the enemy already had moved to a different location and again and again he encountered failure. That's when he created this team of teams structure. A lot of transparency within the team, but on a need to know basis, he used to share across teams. That's the model he talks about in this book. But all this is well and good. Tell me about this company, right? Don't, don't be misled by the colors, yeah? Looks like Zoho's colors. But most of the time, the, the secret model that we have in our mind of our own companies is probably like this, right? It's a matrix relationship, people reporting, people not reporting, uh, there's a senior, there's a junior, there are peers, all over the place, there is no real model I can map directly into the so many models that we saw just now. I think you should embrace this as a structure. You don't need to have a book and follow the guidelines of whatever structure they are recommending. You need to find ways to actually embrace this new chaotic structure, or rather lack of structure, and find ways and find tools that can actually help improve and boost your productivity. That's what we are going to do today. I'll start with this. All of you remember this 10-year challenge, this hashtag, where people started posting photographs about how they looked 10 years ago or how something was 10 years ago and how it is now. So one of them looked like this in 2009. This was the happy family. Guess what happens in 2019? <laughs> this is more interesting, actually. 2009. What happened in 2019 with all the scientific breakthroughs of the previous decade? <laughs> Remember that? Yeah? I'm talking about the 20-year challenge. Zoho has been around for 22 years now. So I'm going to say 20 things that used to be much harder, that used to be impossible, that used to be much more difficult, probably even improbable, before Zoho came onto the workplace, and how easy it is how possible it is, and how magical it is now that you have Zoho. That's the 20-year challenge for the workaday wonders of office life. Let's get started. I'm going to divide this whole conversation into three circles. It's me, stuff that I want to do for my own personal productivity, for my own work at uh, my office. And then there is you, stuff that I want to do with you, one person to another person in a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And then there is many of you, a large group of people, probably everybody in your company, probably everybody only in your team, probably the few people in your team who do marketing, right? So I'm going to divide my conversation into these three. There is me, there is you, and there is many of you. Let's start with me. Searching for old conversations. It could be a legal necessity these days to locate that particular document that was incriminating and submit it as evidence. It could just be an old, old lead that you encountered somewhere in the lobby and you want to dig up that mail, that you had a long conversation with him and you forgot all about it. And he, he seemed to have an amazing memory. He started off from where he left off 
and you need to pick that out. How often have we been in that situation? And it's been very difficult finding that old conversation. Thanks to Zoho, thanks to a specific product called Click, look how easy it has become. In Click, when you start searching, you can search from user to user, in what channel or in what independent individual chat you were actually having that conversation, from a date, before a date, on a date, was it about a file? Was it about a link? What frequent contacts were they? Can I quickly jump to a particular contact person? Or it could even be about a channel that you were part of. Like I was part of the channel that I had created just for this talk. And was it that? So it, at, with a click of a button, you're able to quickly supply a search phrase and narrow down your options by choosing dates and time and from and to. That searching for old conversations made much easier. We always had people to help us get our job done. There was Friday for Robinson Crusoe. There was Jarvis for Iron Man. Yeah, they got the job done, yes. But I am presenting to you Taz. Taz is a robot from Click, which can do things like, see what's happening there. Hello, Scott, you had set yourself a reminder. Go ahead and select an action. Mark as complete or snooze for a time. In your chat conversation, while you're chatting with somebody, you want to make a small note. You want to remind yourself, hey, let me do this. All you need to do is just put a slash command and that's what happens for you. When somebody shares a document with you, Taz is there again to tell you that this document has been shared. Do you want to open it up? So that's Friday plus Jeeves plus Jarvis plus more. That's Taz. We all wish there was this oracle, this person who knew everything. Secretly, I want to make a connection with that person, find the answer before I continue my conversation. We wish we had this person. Consulting the oracle, the conversation is still in click. What's happening here is somebody has told me, hey, guys, I'm going to um, Austin. Uh, is there anyone coming directly from office? Somebody has raised his hand. The traffic seems better from office. I should have, say, I should have stayed, I say. And then immediately what I'm doing bottom down there is slash traffic from Austin to San Antonio. It immediately sends out a hook to Google, finds out the information. This is visible only for me. It's not part of the conversation that I'm having. So that's the oracle I'm talking about. It immediately makes me much more empowered. It's as if I know everything, but the other person doesn't know I'm having the help from so many other web hooks, right? So that's beautiful. Fun at work. This used to be fun at work, right? So if we want to make, um, have fun, we used to pick a guy and do this to him on his or her birthday. See what's happening here. Again, this is click. Today, this colleague of mine started saying games. She's actually chatting with the bot. Our click channel has a bot, and this bot has a category of tools available called games. And inside games, she has chosen photo game. Immediately, what Click has done is connected to the Zoho people repository of our company, taken a random photo from the people group, and posted it there and said, can you mention the person in the pic? It faintly resembles me. And this person has immediately posted my name there. Wow, you guessed this right. See where you stand on the leaderboard. So that's a fun little tool right there in your chat um, interaction while you're uh, working. You want to have some fun? You can do this. There are four or five other games that we have built. And it's as easy as a few lines of deluge code and some JavaScript thrown in that you can roll out your own game on top of it. You want to play tic-tac-tic-tac-toe, you want to play chess, you want to play Go, you can code that right inside our Click 
platform. Moving on to the second uh, layer, which is me and you. I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one conversation digitally with the other person. Let's look at some examples. Sending a document across the world used to be like this, costly, risk-prone, time-consuming. Today, this is what Zoho Mail lets you do. Follow along, this is a looping video anyway. I can actually choose a file, including very large files, because it has a beautiful connection with Word Drive. You can have a very large file. It's not a 10 MB limit or a 40 MB limit, a very large file. You can choose the file. You can set permissions. Can it be read-only? Can it also be edited? Can only the recipients of this mail, if I forward it to somebody else, the link will stop working? How powerful is that? Can everyone in my organization see it? And can I say anyone in the internet can see it, but only with a password and only for a set period of time. There is a date for expiry. So that's how powerful file sharing using email and integration with WorkDrive has become. This is the one I jumped the gun on, asking and receiving expert assistance. So we all have this uh, um, scenario where I am the support agent, the world-facing person in my company, and a support query has come in via email, and this person is asking me, uh, how do you solve this problem? How do you fix this thing that's broken? How do I build on top of this? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You are the support person, but you really don't know enough about it. There are two other people in your company who are actually the people who built that product probably, or built that feature probably, who are experts, who are 10 times as experienced as you are. What you typically do is you forward that email to this other person, and that person gets a mail saying FWD colon on the subject line with the content of the mail, and he immediately answers with the answer to the query, and you get a mail back from that person which says re colon FWD colon and you have a doubt in what he has sent. You didn't get it. So you send it back, so it becomes a recolon, FWD colon, recolon, recolon, FWD colon. And sometimes, I have made this mistake myself, and sometimes you respond to the guy who sent the original mail with this whole thread hiding in the bottom, right? It's like opening the kimono. So that's a very risky thing to do. What we have built in, here instead in Zoho Mail, is when somebody gets a mail like this, I hope you're well, I was evaluating Zoho Mail, do you have any comparison document or page between Google and Zoho Mail? This will help me in making a quick decision. What this person is doing after receiving the mail is just addressing the marketing team. It could be a whole group, it could be an individual. I am at mentioning, welcome to the world of social inside mail. I'm just at mentioning that person, and I'm saying, FYI, here's a friend of mine, sent me this morning, do we have something that we have prepared that I can shoot it back? Automatically, that person can respond to it below, attach a file, or like my response. And what actually happens is, this conversational social thread is invisible to the recipient, to the person who sent the original mail. So at the end of this beautiful conversation, this consultation with the oracle, so to speak, I can write in all-knowing wisdom my final response, and that person is none the wiser. So that's streams from Zoho Mail. This is another situation that's faced by most people who start on a job. There is this important mail, and nobody is ready to let you take the risk, right? They are afraid you will shoot yourself on the foot or you will bite yourself by mistake. So they put a cone like this around you and say, you can only receive mails, you can't send mails, right? That's how most of our internships start. What we have provided in Zoho Mail is you can actually draft and share. It's again based on the same stream engine from Zoho Mail. What you see happening here is, hi, Michelle. Here is the groundwork I think that needs to be done. 
let's have a review meeting. And then you share the draft and you say, I am planning to send this mail to Michelle. Do let me know if I need to add anything more. And they can give you their wisdom from their experience, from their hard uh, uh, mistakes, and you can add that in. And finally, it becomes as if it's a collaborative effort, but shot off from your email box. That is draft sharing available in Zoho Mail. Talking about sharing, another problem that most of us face is people want to write to Sridhar Vembu all the time. He gets thousands of mails every day. And that's a problem for me because in your mails, my conversations are lost. So what he wants to do is, he wants to say, anybody who sends me mail from at zohokarp.com, uh, push them to this folder. Anybody else coming from the outside world, push them to this folder. But he doesn't have this lady. Right? He, he's a CEO with no uh, a business secretary or a, um, executive assistant to help handle all that. He, he delves through everything himself. So in case you want to receive from the outside world, you don't want CEO at zohocorp.com. You want a single person. You want a real personal touch attached to it. But you don't want to go through every mail that you're receiving. So what you do is you recruit another person, but you delegate a particular folder in your inbox to that person's name. So what happens, that person can actually see just that folder of your mailbox and optionally can even respond on your name. That's the power of sharing and delegating in Zoho Mail. It's as easy as this. You can share a folder and when sharing, you can allow delegation to Mitch. When I say allow delegate, it means I am empowering that person to actually respond on my name. All the mails that come into that folder, this person can see and respond. You can also provide read-only access so that person cannot respond but can see what's happening. You can also provide write access and you can also allow delegation. That's sharing and delegating work. The moment you are doing this share, the other person gets a notification like this and you accept or you can say you reject. And immediately, you in your mailbox, in the left side, you get a small panel like this, which tells you there is this specific folder that is shared by the other person that you have access to. We often want to be reminded, I send an important uh, requirement to somebody, and that person misses out in responding. But I want to be told that person hasn't responded. I want to tell that person that he hasn't responded. Both of this is needed. Used to be that we could only do this. But today, you can actually try this. When you're sending out a mail, you can set a reminder. And this reminder has all possible features you can think of. You can say, set a reminder on every response. If you're sending it to multiple people, you can set a reminder if no one replies. You can set a reminder regardless of the reply by notification, by time. You can also pre-create a response note saying, hey, I know you're busy, but this needs to be done. You can also pre-create the template and pump it off. That's the power of notifications and reminders in Zoho Mail. Again, when you set a reminder, you are told, here is a reminder that you had set, and you can snooze it or dismiss it. And you can also snooze all kinds of options available out there. The next uh, feature that I want to talk about is called e-widgets. It's an add-on. It's an application add-on on top of Zoho Mail. What you're seeing here is the way directions used to be sent in mail. We would say, hi, Rebecca, this is the directions to the venue. Walk, walk right, turn left, turn right. In case you get lost, get lost. <laughs> right? This used to be the way we could send mail uh, uh, directions. But watch what's happening here. We have an e-widget embedded there. That's the Google Maps widget right inside your Zoho Mail interface. With insert map, a link, and a visual, all that you need to do is click, and it opens up the relevant Google Maps tool. We have such integrations 
baked into so many of our Zoho products. We have third-party integrations too with Asana and Zendesk and much more. And what's best about it is you can write your own integrations. If you have a tool that you want to get integrated with, with the relevant API, with some lines of JSON parsing, you can actually create your own integrations. You need not leave the mail interface. You can get all the work done right here. Reminding the other person to act. When I used to be in college, I wanted to always study for my final exam, waking up at 3.30 a.m. in the morning, 3.30 a.m. And none of this mechanical alarms used to really get the job done. So we all depend on one thing when all else fails. What's that thing? Mom, right? So I would say, mom, wake me up at 3.30 a.m. And what mom had to do was she had to wake up at 3.20 a.m. so that she can wake me up at 3.30 a.m. and then go back to sleep. So what we are providing here is a time warp feature using which you can set a reminder for somebody else and sleep away. That's what is happening in Plick here. It's a small conversation that I'm having with somebody. And I realize that this person will need a reminder, not right away. Nobody needs reminders right away. They only want it after, the, after they have forgotten it. So what this tool does in Plick is, in your conversation, while you're talking about it with somebody, you just say slash remind. The moment you say slash remind, it immediately asks, who should I remind? About what? At what time? So within your organization or in your chat community, if you have a reminder requirement, all you need to do is you don't need to leave the interface at all. The other person wouldn't even know a reminder has been set. Slash remind, who, about what, at what time? And then automatically it pops up. Meeting somebody face to face, used to be like this, right? You had to take that long plane trip and get the work done. Today, with Zoho Meeting, you can actually have a, an across devices, seamless from browser, from native platforms, from Windows, from Mac, from iOS and Android. You can share your uh, mugshot and get your voice call done and a video call done. It's available in multiple products from Zoho because it's such an important need. Face, FaceTime, they call it, right? So that's very important. But beyond that, you also sometimes want to share your screen because there are times when grandma comes and says, I am not able to do that, right? I'm not able to find the any key. How do, I, how do I press the any key? Because I don't see it on the keyboard. No amount of face-to-face -face interaction can actually solve it because you need to see what's on screen for grandma. And for that, we provide screen sharing across devices again. You can actually see what's on the other person's screen. And that's when you realize, oh my god, she's talking about any key, not any key. Right. So that's again brought to you by Zoho Meeting, the screen sharing tool that I was talking to you about. One more par, the voodoo doll used to be the game. You can actually control from remote. Today. With Zoho Meeting, you can also do that. You can take control of the remote person's keyboard and mouse, based on permissions, of course, and actually get your installation or get your settings tweaked. So what we see here is six, seven people are there in, a, in your Zoho Meeting, and you are choosing to give control to the other person so that the other person can take over and continue the meeting or do the demonstration or do their installation. You can also remove at any point of time because you are the administrator. The power remains in your hands all the time. This is the great boon for people wanting to do remote technical customer support because they would want to take ownership of your device or your computer for a brief while and resolve that malware or resolve that small setting that's needed so that you can connect to your uh, uh, local Wi-Fi or mod modem. The third layer then, me, you, I'm talking about many of you or some of you. 
people with special interests, smaller groups within a large organization. Annotating images collaboratively. There's an image, they call it whiteboarding. I throw it up out there and I want to annotate. Anybody remembers what this, uh, this moment from movie history is? What's the original picture out there? The original art? Whistler's mother, one of the most famous American paintings this is. But why is it defaced? So there's this famous Mr. Bean movie, yeah, where he actually, uh, by mistake, uh, uh, spills something on the painting and uh, ends up being the artist and fills out what's been erased, and that's the result. So if you have an image and you want to collaboratively convey, saying, hey, this looks good, um, I think we can go run with this for our ad campaign. But I think this photograph needs to be tweaked a little. But you are geographically separated. How do you communicate that? We have tools just for that in Click. And what you see on the left, it's probably a little too dark. But you can annotate images by drawing shapes, by pointing, by coloring, by adding arrows, adding text, and so on. And you can clearly say, everything is fine. Just fix this bit, and we're good to go. That's image annotation collaboratively in a large chat channel in Click. Collecting public opinion. So what do you all think? Do we, do, should we go for um, uh, drinks at lunch itself, or should we wait till the reception is up? So if questions like that pop up, it used to be that we could only do this. But today, with Connect, you can actually run a poll just as easily as you start a conversation or a post. So somebody has started a poll, and he's asking, should we move our blog to a different platform? We have narrowed it down to two options, but I'm still not sold on one or the other. I would like to take your help in guiding me towards it. Should it be WordPress? Should it be Medium? The blue indicates that I have myself voted and my vote has been towards medium. This is collaborative decision making, and it really helps because it's good to take inputs while retaining dictatorial power on the final call. This is connect, and this is polls in connect. Making company-wide announcements, I exactly remember doing this in college. I went and put up a notice in every hostel, dorm, and I put it up like that. And it got such reception. Everybody who noticed it because they all had to turn their head to read what was in that message. So you don't need to do all this because in Connect, we have an announcement feature. In, with the announcement feature, it's pinned up on top. It's brought up as a notification. And it's, we ensure that this notification reaches each and every person it's meant to reach. That's Connect, announcements in your public wall in your group wall, or in your own private feed. There are special interest groups, again. This is how special interest groups used to be. Weekend meetings and uh, lunchtime meetings. Probably people are stamp collectors. Probably people are professional speakers planning their next talk. But today, with Connect again, you get this digital remoteness if you want. And these are just examples of the kind of groups that you can have in Connect. There is a finance team. There is customer support. There is movies and TV. There is lit for life. There is business development. There is a manager's group. And actually, there are groups that you can't even see. Because when creating a group, you can say it is a public group. Anybody can join. You can say it's a closed group. You can only watch what's happening. You can't get in. You can say it's a closed group. You can only know the name of the group, but you can't even see what's happening. And you can say it's a secret group. They wouldn't even know it exists. Right? So all kinds of groups are possible, again, in Connect. And it's anybody's job. Anybody can start a group and get it rolling. Connect has this philosophy that you can start with your ideas and end with your implementation right inside Connect. You don't need to get out of it at all. So from idea generation and brainstorming, all the way to task management. It used to be like this. So it's about lean uh, management and agile management. So we have adopted exactly that philosophy, and we give you, right inside Connect, an ability to manage a small team with tasks assigned to each of them, with just beautiful drag and drop 
across ongoing tasks, tasks on hold, open tasks, and completed tasks. This gives you a bird's eye view. You can also drill down into every task, look at its history, look at its reassignments, and so on. You want to get them all in one room? Used to be that you had this board room, and you used to have board meetings, right? Where people used to get bored. So that those times have changed, and we now have, with Zoho Meeting, again, the ability to meet with 99 other people. So total number of people is 100. You can meet with 100 people across the world. You can mute everybody. You can unmute everybody. You can assign the microphone to some person. You can give control of the keyboard and mouse, and hence the presentation itself, to anybody you want. That's the power of Zoho Meeting, where you can run your meetings remotely distributed across geographies. So that's the 20-year challenge. You ran through 20 different features that have changed thanks to Zoho and companies like Zoho, which have adopted modern technologies for the modern workplaces of today, the workaday wonders of office life. So we saw mail, we saw click, we saw connect, and we saw meeting. Talking about the 20-year challenge, Thank you.